Well, with all this uh, talk recently and blogging about uh, measuring inductance and capacitance, it reminded me I've got uh, the mother of all inductance and capacitance meters sitting in my lab here. Um, this is an old Genrad impedance bridge. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit uh, bigger and fancier than my little inductor checker or the uh, AADE box, but it does a lot more. And it's it's really a, a lab grade piece of gear, even though it's I don't know 50 years old or so. Um, so I'll just go over the controls for you. You can get a feel for how to use it. It's it's obviously a bit more involved than the other boxes. It takes a little bit more user interaction. Um, up here we just have the main power and mode switch, so you can select. Uh, between AC and DC excitation. Obviously uh, DC you can only use if you're dealing with a resistor. AC you can use for anything. And you can also select external sources. Um, the uh, idea of using a bridge like this, if you don't already know it, is that you, you're trying to get the uh, the meter as close or on, you know, on zero on the uh, center null point. Um, right now it's obviously reading a bit high, um, but that's our our goal is to to balance the bridge and then we can read the component value. Uh, over here is the uh, the main mode switch, two positions for capacitance, higher and lower Q parts, same for inductance, and then two for resistance. Although this one is labeled G for uh, conductance basically for higher value resistors. Um, you can see down here it's the DQ scale and there's four uh, four separate uh, scales there and the appropriate one is backlit depending on which uh, mode you've selected. Now you saw for the two center ones there the resistance modes it goes out this guy comes on it's also reading Q, but I guess I don't know the, the details of the internal circuitry, but obviously in resistance modes it just wants to use a different circuit. So those two modes, and in fact it also automatically uh, changes the, the equivalent circuit. So when you're in the resistance mode for lo reading lower value parts, the, uh, it's assuming a, a series inductive component. Uh, if you're in the conductance mode for higher resistance parts, it's assuming that the 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 uh, most significant um, parasitic in your part is going to be a, a parallel capacitance, so that lights up. But in either case, you can you you can dial up the uh, the Q here. Um, these two controls adjust your uh, the the level of the excitation signal and the sensitivity of the amp driving the meter. Uh, so really they're, they kind of do the same thing almost in terms of what you're seeing and uh, you'll see how that's used when I actually try and measure a part. Uh, also, over here is where the uh, the part value is actually going to be read out and you can see it also changes depending on the mode you're in. So it's, I don't know if you can see that on the video, I can do some close-ups later, but right now it's showing picofarad um, <laughs> milliohms, microhenries. Now this one is really weird, or a bit unusual for two reasons. Uh, it's showing N nano, and uh, I think this had come up a while ago on on Scope Junction. The the uh, origin of some of these uh, less common prefixes. I mean they're common enough now, but in the 1960s they were less so. But you know here's an example of nano. And uh, the symbol there, it's an omega, but it's upside down. And uh, even today, this the, uh, the, the unit for conductance the, uh, is a semen, and it's not that well known. Back in the 60s, they hadn't uh, introduced the semen yet, so they used a unit called the MO, which is spelled M-H-O, which if you spell that 
backwards or frontwards is OHM, OM. It's just OM spelled backwards. Um, I hadn't seen this before, so obviously this is an another way of uh, indicating the, the MO unit is by drawing your uh, omega upside down. So that's kind of cool. And then he, th this switch just uh, is your range switch, and you can see it It uh, moves the decimal point there, little lights behind each position, and uh, just lets you select the range. And then the idea is, you know, once, you, well, you, you'll, you'll, you'll see in a moment, I'll, I'll test the capacitor, but, you know, you adjust the, uh, the reading until, uh, again, to, to get the meter to balance out. So let's start with what? How about a capacitor? So I've got a, a plastic capacitor here of some description. I think it was about 470 nano. We'll see. So um, let's set our mode switch. Uh, capacitor. We'll try that one first. As you can see, we're uh, off scale on the meter already, so let's bring that down a bit. And we'll use the, uh, the coarse range switch first to see what the lowest reading is. And that's right about there. Um, now we can use the coarse uh, setting on here and try and bring that needle down a bit more. That might be it. And then this is the fine adjust. Looks like I might have to go up one. Okay, so we're pretty much on the null, or as good as we can do. Let's bump up the sensitivity and uh, drive signal. Um, and yeah, that looks about as close as we can get. Now, I should uh, go back to here because we might be able to get closer. And it's always, <laughs> I think one of these scales a little bit erratic. Yeah. But there you can see we're <laughs> we can get closer. How about this one again? Aha. Okay. Okay, now we're talking. So there, you can see I'm finding a null, a null in the meter there. Let's try the value. Oh, we, oh yeah. Okay, so there. It's usually a, a, a process of going back and forth a little bit. So there, there is our null based on the value setting. And there based on the uh, the D or the Q. So we have a reading of 470.6 nanofarads. Bang on what it's supposed to be, even though it's probably like a 10 or even 20 percent part. And the uh, the D and dissipation factor reads as 0 0.005 it looks like on that top scale there. Just over 0 0.005. So yeah, there's uh, there's our capacitor. Not too bad. Um, okay, let's try an inductor next. Coincidentally, this is also supposed to be a 470, except it's uh, millihenry, not nanofarads. We probably won't have to move our value dial too far. Once again, our meter is pinning. Uh, let's set our thing to... I'm going to guess that's a low Q inductor, but we'll see. So I set it to low Q. Um, find our course setting. Hmm. Looks like that's the closest. But I may be wrong. <laughs> yes, I think I'm wrong because now I'm up to the maximum. 
for some reason the uh, the dials all go up to sort of it looks like a binary scale here but it's really just you know 1100 and so on 11 something that's what the scales go up to uh, looks like we'll have to go up to here which has a full scale of 1100 millihenries which makes sense you get up so somewhere in there is is uh, our null let's uh, go over to here and see if we can improve that yes Hmm. <laughs> Oop. Oh, I see. The uh, This thing doesn't have end stops, so once it goes around, it jumps. Okay. Um, so that's showing a Q of... Oh, so maybe it actually qualifies as a high Q. Sure. Oh. Hmm. Anyway, somewhere around there. Increase our sensitivity a bit. Twiddle the uh, value a bit more. Yep. Um, okay. Maybe that makes a funny noise when it's <laughs> when you turn it quickly. Anyway, it's somewhere around there. It's not. I'm not getting too sharp a uh, a null. Let's leave it. Huh. Or fifty. Yeah, somewhere in the 450s, I think. Try playing with the DQ again. Aha, now we're talking. So sometimes it takes a few a few iterations back and forth. So there, we're getting a null. Right about there. And, aha. Much sharper null once everything is in close. Look at that almost to zero. So we're reading 459 and a half millihenries and a Q of it's the uh, looks like about 32 or so. So that's not bad. That's like one kilohertz. Of course the Q varies with frequency. But there you go. So that's an inductor.